Hi, I'm Bob, and I'll be your tour guide for this first edition of the RANDS video newsletter. As a matter of fact, Randy gave me a whole list of things that we wanted to cover in this first edition. Number one on the list, the milestone that was reached in the S7 certification program. After that, we're going to take a look at the S16 Shikari as it takes to the air. Then, we're going to look at that MITRE machine, that space-age machine that helps make airplanes here at RANDS. Our employee profile will be on Ronnie Hendershot, RAND's own CNC programmer, and you're going to like this. He's also a soundtrack artist. After we talk to Ronnie, we're going to tour the facility. That's right, we have a brand new factory to take a look at. Then, we'll visit with those folks behind the RAND's bicycles. And last but not least, we're going to talk to Paula Schlitter about the building of the 1,000th Coyote here at RAND's. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our first edition of the RANDS video newsletter. We're visiting with Randy about the S7 certification program, and Randy, you say we've reached a milestone. What in particular milestone for RANDS? It's the uh, prototype flies. In the certification process, we have about three milestones. The first one is the flying of the prototype. Second one is the obtaining of the type certificate, and the third one's the production certificate. On December 20th, we opened the doors and had a roll in. It was too cold out uh, to have a roll out in the tradition of the aircraft industry. So we rolled in the aircraft into our warm showroom and had two tablefuls of hot pizza and about hundred and some people visiting. Really? Okay. Uh, wow. Most of which were our employees, all very proud to see the new bird being hatched. Uh, we gathered around the airplane and... Uh, Looks like a photo session here. Yes, and we, and we enjoyed the fact that this hard work being done was there and uh, we got to touch, see, and feel it. For many of us, it was maybe the first exposure to the finished product. Uh, good pizza. In fact, one of the quotes I think that made it into the paper was it, it must be a good airplane, it smells like pizza. <laughs> a lot of dignitaries uh, from the local scene were there. We had uh, the money machine, the bankers. They have to have those fellas. We, we need those guys. Yep, those, In fact, those fellas, uh, there they are right there. There they are, the banker guys. And of course, it wasn't the most ideal day to be flying a brand new airplane. Uh, the wind was 70 degrees, uh, crosswind with about uh, 25 to 30 some miles an hour. And of course I blasted off and persevered. It's a beautiful little ship, it's smooth, it's fast. It, uh, historically speaking, it has done something significant in terms of being better than the kit plane it's derived from. Which, which is, what's it derived from? Uh, the Courier, uh, Courier kit okay. aircraft. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, when a kit plane becomes a certified plane, it usually gains some weight and drag and loses a percent of performance. But in this case, we were lucky. We actually came, ahead, came out ahead on the game. What are we showing here? These are uh, up-close detail shots of some of the many changes that went through uh, on the process of certification. Mm -hmm. uh, a little cleanliness there. The belly was shown, no radiator anymore, battery access door. and. Uh, that, that netted us some right there. Sure, mm -hmm. you bet. Pretty airplane, red, white, and blue. Nice, safe colors. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we got a nice brake system on this uh, aircraft. We have dual rotor, or dual calipers, uh, compact instrument mm -hmm. panel. As you see, our little beauty trip lip here, it, it uh, simulates, or it, it energizes the air, so it helps draw the air out of the cowling. But uh, what we have, one behind the other, first the oil cooler, then we have the radiator. And all the air entering the cowling through these two openings, or these three openings, the two inlets above and one here, virtually has to pass through these two radiators. We're getting fairly adequate cooling. I've noticed that we're for slow taxi or back taxi, we're getting up there on the temps. So the reason we cut this extra hole is that we have uh, designs on putting a housing over the radiator and then we'll run aero ducts and dump fresh inlet air that hasn't bypassed the engine to be dedicated just to cooling and then the oil which is not so critical and can run with a higher temp anyway 
will use the air that comes over the engine. And right now we're not having any oil temp problem and we're really not having that much on our rad, but it is a little critical on the back taxi. So in order to meet the criteria that we need for the certification, it has to pass a certain uh, allowance or back taxi or back winded. And with the fresh air inlet, we probably get that. The ambience of the aircraft has been maintained. It's still the S7 Courier. It looks fairly fast, Randy. What kind of cruise speed are you looking at? Uh, we're getting about 110 out of it at a, probably four and a quarter gallons per hour. Mm -hmm. That makes it a practical airplane for cross country. We have a nice roomy tandem cab. It's comfortable, sure. Okay. The tandem feature of the aircraft is one of the secrets to the S7's performance envelope. Mm -hmm. It has the narrow profile for being uh, it has a narrow profile to the wind, or low drag, right. and it allows it to not only be fast, but slow. One of the most difficult things in, in building an aircraft is, is giving it a large performance envelope. Mm. And uh, with a minimal horsepower like we have, like say 80 horsepower, you have to reduce drag, but you want enough wing to do things like pop off the ground and climb sure. out well. Sure, just like that, you bet. Uh, where we see the S7 being popular is as, as a mini bush plane or economical bush plane mm -hmm. uh, falling into the uh, also the person wanting a sport plane or a kit plane not necessarily wanting to build it uh, here's a plane that a guy can purchase for fifty thousand dollars can uh, have it already built already to go we uh, you hand me the check I hand you uh, the keys yeah you say you want a blue one or the red one uh, you come out here, you pick up your plane, or we even deliver it. To really? Uh, we'll have a delivery uh, service center at the airport, and uh, with that, we can receive the customer, brief them, uh, check them out, and uh, sure. send them on his way. Great. Looks yeah. like it handles really well. Really well. Looks very easy. Well, Randy, it looks like you might have a winner on your hands, and wish you best of luck on the certification. Well, thanks, Bob. Now's your chance to get a Rands t-shirt, a Rands hat, or even both. T-shirts are only $12, hats are only $10. So before you go to the next air show, be cool. Wear a Rands t-shirt or a Rands hat. Give us a call or send your order to the factory today. Get a Rands and be cool. We're talking about the S-16 Shikari. Randy, why the Shikari? Why the Shikari, Bob? Uh, we wanted a higher performance aircraft. Currently our planes cruise anywhere from uh, 80 to 120 miles an hour. The Shikari is supposed to cruise uh, 140, 200 miles an hour. The problem with planes in that performance range are usually, uh, there's usually a long building time. So we invented what we call uh, QBHP, which stands for uh, Quick Build High Performance. How was it uh, designed in order to affect QBHP? Well, if you look at the airplane closely, you'll notice that it's not made of one thing. Some aircraft are made of uh, a fully composite design, some are made uh, all tube with uh, fabric covering, and some are made all sheet metal. Uh, the Shikari uses a blend of three different mediums. It uses uh, sheet metal for the wings and some control surfaces. It uses composite for the fuselage and some stabilizers. And then it uses a uh, chromoly steel cage. By using those three different things, we've taken advantage of the best of those natures to give the builder the best and the quickest build time possible. Randy, how's the program going? Well, it's kind of a slow starting program. We've been at this aircraft for quite a while and I'm sure a lot of our, our viewers are anxious to, to get this plane delivered because uh, over this time period we've collected quite a few sales. We've got a lot of deposits for Shikaris. Mm -hmm. It's uh, kind of unprecedented for us to have a, a success prior to the actual aircraft existing. <laughs> You're right. What are your expectations on, on the, the program itself? Well, from any sign of from having uh, the anxious pre-ordering, we uh, look at a 100 plus uh, per year market and uh, fairly widespread U.S. and, and uh, uh, overseas as well. So what's your delivery schedule then? 
Deliveries are probably going to be uh, sometime uh, second quarter or possibly third quarter. We plan on doing staging of the aircraft, not delivering entire kits, uh, partial kits. Are there going to be more planes of this type? More planes like the Shikari, mm -hmm. uh, more planes uh, QBHP, mm -hmm. we believe so. We, we always have something cooking at Rands, Bob. Space frames, structures made of steel tubing. The hardest, most time-consuming part about building space frames is the mitering the shaping of the tube at the intersections. The miter machine is a modern space age way of making miters at RAND. Hi there. Uh, I operate the CNC plasma cutter and today we're going to cut the down tube for the Screamer bicycle. We're going to cut this tube as you you can see it has quite a few different tubes running through it and intersecting it in all locations. When we get done it's going to look like this. The way I make that is I come to my computer program, I draw my main tube and then all the intersecting tubes. Using the program then I create a spline that tells the computer how to cut these individual cuts. I turn that in a numeric code, edit it, and then transfer it to my cutting machine. When it's ready to operate, I load up the proper tube. It will then load the tube, clamp it, feed it through, and cut it automatically. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and feed it down there. Start the machine. It loads the tube up to a find location. It then searches for the end of the tube and then loads it, clamps it, and feeds it into the proper location for cutting and proceeds to do its cuts. The plasma cutter itself is like an electronic torch. It creates a spark inside and then adds compressed air to force the cut through the metal. It's similar to electric welder except for it's using, using itself as a cutting torch.
all the movements have been previously programmed in. Uh, doing what they call gin moves. It's done, done a gin move there. Getting set up for the next cut. It does the cut. Drops the piece down. Advances. And gets ready for the next cut. And the sequence starts all over again. If you're interested in more information on RAND's products, we have other videos available, including the factory tour with all of our aircraft, the Super 6, the S-12 seaplane, our clear coat process, and the S-14 assembly. Look for these up and coming videos, soon to be available, a new factory tour with all of our aircraft, and the S-16 Shikari. Order yours today. In this issue's employee profile, we're talking with Ronnie Hendershot from RANS. Ronnie has been with the company now for eight years. Uh, Ronnie, uh, you've seen a few changes over that time period. You bet, a lot of changes. Several mm -hmm. changes. We, I'm sure that things have changed uh, dramatically over that period uh, since you've been here. How about a few of those? We've gone from making everything by hand to using a lot of CNC equipment. CNC equipment meaning? computer controlled uh, routers, mills. We don't have a com computerized lathe yet, but we do have a t tube drilling machine. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You do uh, quite a bit of this uh, on computer. Are you the computer operator? I do a lot of the cam work. Mm -hmm. I get drawings from engineering and I go ahead and put cam boundaries and tool paths on the stuff. Mm -hmm. Exactly what does the machine do? It reads the files I create and cuts out the parts. And so as you're cutting out the parts, it's all computer controlled. Very little, uh, I guess, concern about uh, uh, any mistakes being made as long as it's computer controlled? That's right, as long as nothing goes wrong. Yeah, <laughs> with a computer, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. When we look at this machine, and uh, as we're looking at it now, uh, explain a little bit of how it actually operates. Okay, we uh, take the uh, drawings from engineering and pull them up in our CAD CAM program. We make sure that the uh, drawings are flawless and then we go ahead and put CAM boundaries and tool paths on and that generates the NC code and the machine takes it from here. Now here we're making S7 instrument panels. These are just stock panels. This machine has uh, four drill heads on it to drill our most uh, common hole sizes and then it's got a computer controlled router and we can cut several different types of material we can cut aluminum up to three quarter inch thick plate we can cut wood, lexan, plastics everything up to a three quarter inch thickness anything that uh, comes in a sheet form we can make just about anything you can draw and we can cut it like we said earlier, folks have many talents here and, and you do other things also, correct? Well, that's right. Okay. We do a lot of uh, tool and jig building and uh, rapid prototyping is another area I'm really interested in. The, the jig building, does that, uh, you use that in the production process? How do you use that? That's right. A lot of jigs are for use for assembly and some for press pressing bending parts and uh, well we build mock-ups a lot of time. Ronnie does a few other things and, and one of the fun things that we like to talk about and, and uh, we're going to show you now. Uh, we talked about multi-talented folks and this really is a pretty multi-talented fella here. Uh, Ronnie there's one thing that you neglected to tell us yet and uh, I'd like for you to demonstrate if you would. Sure. We, uh, Randy and I like to play music and record it. Now, I'm not going to sing on this, so you go ahead. <laughs> Now 
you've played this on the Super 6 video and you're playing it on this video, right? You bet. Ronnie, we have a good time here and, and there are a lot of people who enjoy doing uh, many different things and we appreciate you taking the time to tell us what all you do and thank you a lot for uh, playing some of the music that we use. Uh, Ronnie Hendershot uh, from Rands Corporation. With a unique twist to cutting the ribbon, the new RANS showroom was opened in January of 1996. Several RANS aircraft were on display. The general public was invited to view the aircraft and hear the announcement of our expansion plans. We're going to uh, reveal what the expansion looks like today. And like Paula said the other day, it came down to two words, didn't it? And uh, those two words are, Loan approved. So we have the money, we have the plan, we even have an artist rendering, and I'd like to reveal to you now exactly what our new expansion is going to look like. You can come in close and take a look at it. We're talking with those folks behind the bicycles at Rands, John Schlitter and Mark Purdy. Mark, exactly what do you guys do here? Well, exactly. I pretty well do everything, and John takes all the credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, John, what do you guys do here? Well, we're responsible <laughs> for the bicycles to be produced at Rands. We, 
we make sure everything happens to get the product out the door. That includes marketing, that includes testing? Yeah, John and I are both sales representatives. Okay. We sell the bikes in the first place. Uh, we make sure that uh, the appropriate frames are built to fill those orders. We assemble the bikes once they're, once the frames are built. Uh, we also make sure that they're distributed to the right people uh, and also follow up with tech support after they've been uh, in the hands of the owners. I guess the obvious question is why is a bicycle company building airplanes or an airplane company building bicycles? So what happened here? Well, years ago we started out building a three-wheel bicycle, tricycle basically, mm -hmm. that was a land seller. You could sell it like a boat but on mm -hmm. land. So we evolved from that in about 1978 to a two-wheel version of that. Mm -hmm. And that's where the term Rand's recumbents come from. In 78 we started producing our two-wheel versions and until now. We evolved into the airplanes in 83 and I guess you can always look back in history and bicycles have always come before airplanes. Yes they have, yes they have. You're Bikes right. and airplanes share a lot of the same technology. They both require high strength, lightweight materials. Uh, and a lot of the same technology is used between the bikes and our airplanes. Uh, you keep looking at the one back here. What is that exactly? Explain that. That's the V-Rex. The V-Rex is far and away our best-selling bike. Uh, probably the reasons for that is that it's the sportiest. It has a wheelbase that's about the same as most upright bikes. So for beginners, it feels a lot like, or it handles on the road a lot like an upright bike does. It also, because the smaller, the shorter wheelbase, uh, you can turn tighter turns, you can store it in a smaller area in your house or in your garage, which uh, is definitely an advantage for people. Mm -hmm. It also fits on standard car roof racks, so you can transport it the same way uh, as upright bikes. Uh, I, I keep making comparisons to uprights because right now that's the, where the world still lies, but right. we're, we're working mm -hmm. on changing that. How does uh, a bike like this arrive on the market, John? Well, basically we market them through your established bicycle retail shop, like uh, your local dealer that sells bikes, mm -hmm. more of your higher quality bikes, not like Huffies where you get a Kmart or something like that. Uh, we go to, to get it to that point, we go to, uh, we attend major trade shows for the bicycle industry. Uh, we go out to Interbike in Los Angeles in September and we go to Chicago in October. And these are the major trade shows where all the dealers from around the country go to these shows to see what's new in products. Right. And we promote it that way. Mm -hmm. And then the other way to promote is through magazines, either through the trade magazines themselves or through the retail magazines such as Bicycling, or as for our bikes, uh, a magazine called the Recumbent Cyclist News. Mm okay, okay. Do they go through a lot of changes? Have the bikes gone through a lot of changes since you began well, this? We keep looking at the V-Rex. Uh, the V-Rex is a very good example of how Rand's made a major change in their philosophy. We'd always been building what we call a long wheels based bike that always had the cranks behind the front wheel mm -hmm. and that made it a longer wheelbase and that and we never really thought that the short wheel base was a decent concept. Well we got pushed and prod to finally do it and we built it and we have fun and it's a lot of fun and it's been a very successful seller. Is this the only success story? Well they've all been success stories so great, far. <laughs> great answer, yes. <laughs> But uh, right now, the, uh, the hottest bike besides the V-Rex would be the Screamer. That's our tandem. Uh, the tandem has been very successful since the start of 96 when we first brought it out. Uh, it allows you to ride with your mate, or whoever you so choose to ride with, uh, and do so in comfort. You guys sound like salesmen. That's, that's a, a great piece we just put together, and I want to thank you. Uh, Mark and John, uh, I want to thank them for helping us with this segment on the bicycles. Since 1990, Rands has been producing the Coyote 2, their most popular kit plane. 
To commemorate the success of this model, the 1997 demo plane is serial number 1000. Already a thousand planes and growing, here to tell us about this popular kit plane is Paula Schlitter, manager of overseas sales and co-founder of Rand's company. Paula, how did the Coyote come to be? Well, as I remember it, Randy was on a flight to Japan and he sketched up an airplane on the way to Japan and was to meet with some Japanese clients and he presented this to them. They were looking for a plane that was easy to build, something that didn't take a lot of space because they don't have a lot of space in Japan and he presented them the, the idea to them at a hotel room in Tokyo and uh, they bought 60 of them on the spot. 60 planes right then and then mm -hmm. it just took off from there. Where else do you sell the planes? We started out real big in the Far East like Japan and our markets soon switched to Europe which became our main focal point for the last five or six years and now we're still real strong in Europe but our sales are increasing a lot in South America. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? How about North America? Do you sell a lot here? Um, the United States sales are, are up mm -hmm. but uh, uh, as a whole we sell more out of the country than we do in the country. And the reason for that, uh, the, other than space needs, do they, they have more interest in these types of planes? I imagine the reasons are many. Um, a big one is the cost of fuel in Europe. Mm -hmm. It's a lot higher than here. Absolutely, yes. And these planes use engines that are real fuel efficient. The 1,000th Coyote. Uh, any projections on where you go from here? Well, we keep making Coyotes. Um, the Coyotes changed a lot. It started, you know, back in the early 90s and it's evolved through the years and become a, a kit plane that's accepted worldwide. They uh, use it a lot in flight schools and I imagine that it will continue to uh, be a popular plane. Paula, we know the Coyote is popular, but is it famous? You could say it's famous. Um, four years in a row, um, the Coyote was named Microlite Champion in Europe. Well, no, it was worldwide, actually. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, then also in the summer of 1995, we had a couple from France fly across the ocean. Really? In a coyote. In a coyote. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. They had it specially equipped with extra fuel tanks, mm -hmm. but yeah. So it is famous. Since the coyote is so famous and popular, do you have other competition copycats, per se? Well, we surely do. It um, seems every month, every other month in Europe, you will find a new comp uh, competitor producing something that looks like the Coyote. But uh, we still feel like we have the edge, we have the reputation, and a lot of these planes coming out of especially Eastern Europe are not of the same quality as our plane. Being the overseas sales manager, exactly how do you go about marketing your planes overseas? Well, for the most part, most of the people um, who sell our planes for us overseas have come and found us, uh, mostly through the trade magazines, through the trade shows, and we've been very lucky. The uh, people who have approached us and become dealers for our products are very good at what they do. Um, they'd, most of them do it full time, it's their livelihood, and uh, you'd be amazed how much that activity goes on over there. Lots of great folks that you work with. Any, uh, yeah, any standouts that uh, you enjoy working with? Almost all of them. Virtually everyone? Virtually mm -hmm. all of them. Um, it's very interesting. They, a good part of them come and visit us, you know, at least every year, every other year. And then the rest of them we see at either Oshkosh or at the big air show in Lakeland, Florida. So it's kind of like a big reunion. Mm -hmm. Paula, what's the significance of the 1,000th Coyote plane? Well, we think it's significance, uh, significant because in the kit plane industry, a 1,000 of any one model is an awful lot. Any other thing special about this one? Well, other than the fact that the uh, assembly crew put everything on it but the kitchen sink, <laughs> we also had a nice commemorative decal made that's on the side of the airplane and it has the names of all the employees who were on the staff at the time that plane was built. Great, great, so. fantastic. Well, thanks for visiting with us. Paula Schlitter, Overseas Sales Manager for RANDS. We appreciate it and congratulations on the 1,000th Coyote Airplane at RANDS.
Thanks for joining us for this first edition of the RANS Video Newsletter. We welcome your comments, suggestions, videos or photos of your plane completions, or story ideas. To subscribe to this quarterly video newsletter, call the factory or your nearest RANS dealer.